Hi guys. If you could look like you're actually interested, Aaron. Uh, foam rolling. What's that all about? Any use, any merits to it? Prehab, injury prevention, stretching? What's your thoughts? Right, so, I mean, I think these have gained, uh, you know, huge popularity now in the gyms. Um, and I think better than doing nothing, but I think they could be optimised. There's better ways to use them. Um, I think some of the things that people think they're doing, so one of the things I hear people talking about is breaking down scar tissue. Um, and I think there's, well, there's several issues with that. Um, first of all, foam rollers work on soft tissues, so you're not using them on, um, typically not using them on joints. And unfortunately, those soft tissues aren't that soft. Uh, as I've talked about in previous videos, in cadaveric studies where they've taken dead bodies um, and used them for medical research, they've hung two ton weights off the Achilles tendon, and even two tons, which is probably the equivalent of a VW Beetle, isn't enough to deform that soft tissue. So I think, first of all, soft tissues aren't soft. So is that why it's changed the tone of a soft tissue? Probably not. What it is probably doing is changing the neurological tone. So in your skin, in your uh, fascia, which overlies the muscles, in your adipose tissue, you've got various different sensory receptors that send information back to the brain. And I think it's via those receptors that you're probably reducing muscle tone and actually then getting a change in muscle length. Um, I think when we're talking about when it's best to use foam rolling, I think unless I've got an athlete, this is probably where you've seen me using it in the gym, unless I've got an athlete who can't hit a position, can't get into a squat or a deadlift or a bench press, whatever it might be, I think then under direction from your therapist, I think it's very useful as one of the tools that we might use to achieve that position prior to training. Um, I think used as a blanket exercise prior to your training sessions, the danger is if you're reducing neurological tone and that neurological tone has been set because the body's trying to stop you from going into a position and all of a sudden you change that range by reducing neurological tone, you've then opened yourself up to potential injury. So I think pre-exercise, um, pre I think it's probably not the best idea. But post-exercise, you know, you're trying to think about your recovery, I think that compression that the foam roller offers is probably a very useful thing in terms of getting you out of your sympathetic tone and more into a sort of parasympathetic state. You just explain the difference between the two. Yeah, so your sympathetic nervous system is your fight or flight response. Um, that's so that's the one I'm in like all the time. <clears throat> that's the one that you're in all the time, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm in a parasympathetic state yeah. all the time, yeah. almost horizontal. Um, so we're like, we're like two halves of the nervous system. So your parasympathetic is your rest and digest. Now, you know, everything you do in terms of training, your pre-workouts, the kind of visualisation, hyping yourself up before you train, that's all designed to get you into a sympathetic nervous system state because that's where you perform better. That's where blood's diverted from your vital organs into the muscles. Heart rate goes up, sweating goes up. Now ideally, as soon as you can get out of that, paras that sympathetic state into your parasympathetic state, that's when your recovery starts. So ideally, as soon as you finish training, you wanna be trying to encourage a, a parasympathetic state because that's when you're gonna to start to rest and digest. The muscle pump that the foam roller achieves, so from the compression onto the muscles, that's really good at removing you know, waste products, metabolites. Um, I think if you combine that with um, some parasympathetic breathing, so where you make the out breath longer than the in breath, which tends to slow heart rate and reduces uh, sympathetic and nervous system tone. We can put a link in at the bottom of the post for anybody that's interested. Yeah, have we done a post on that then? No, but we'll just link somebody else's post. Okay, Sarah's a good one for that, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Right, so, yeah, so I think in terms of uh, what we're doing, I think I think it, it, it depends. Um, I think the other thing with foam rolling is that it's... Pains to seem to be a good thing by a lot of the lifting community. In fact, by a lot of fitness enthusiasts. Pain, it's no pain, no gain. You know, you hear all about that. 
those kind of those um, phrases. And I think pain tends to stimulate a sympathetic nervous system response. So again, if you're in that recovery phase and you're trying to recover post-workout, but you're using the foam roller as, as an opportunity to lengthen muscles or do whatever you think it does, I think that pain is probably likely to take you out of your parasympathetic back into a sympathetic state. Um, so again, I think if we gave it some sort of pain scale, so I think when I'm working with athletes post-exercise, we talk about a visual analog scale for pain. So zero is no pain, 10 is the worst pain you could experience, like childbirth. Um, or apparently kidney stones, yeah, I'm yet to be convinced. Yeah, um, yeah, there's something passing, a little pebble passing through your urethra. Rather or than a, like a seven football. pound head, True. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd, think, <clears throat> I'd go. Uh, I'd go with kidney stone every time. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think we assign a pain scale to this. So I think for athletes, trying not to go above a five out of ten on that visual analog scale for pain would be really useful, because again, there's some discomfort there, but it's not pain. Um, and then I think the the final thing I'd probably say about foam rolling in terms of mobility, and I think this is where you've probably seen me using it most. When it comes to mobility, which is you know the, the range of movements around a joint, it's not just the soft tissues that restrict that movement, as we've alluded to in the first part of the video. So the tension of your nervous system, that can restrict range of movement. So part of what this is doing is reducing neurological tone, which then means we're getting an increased range of movement because the nerves and the muscles that are supplied by those nerves aren't as tight. Um, what we are probably forgetting in that is the joints, so I think where you've seen me using this, particularly when we're doing sort of spinal work, is trying to maintain or encourage movement through some of those spinal joints. So I think in summary, I think it has its uses. It's not the be all and end all. You know, there's lots of other things, lots of other adjuncts that we'd use in conjunction with the foam roller. Pre-training, it might not be necessarily be the best thing unless you can't achieve position. Post-training, in terms of recovery, when combined with things like parasympathetic breathing, um, joint mobilisation techniques, some soft tissue stretching, I think it probably is very useful, as long as you control the level of pain that you're working on. Excellent. Thank you.